there you go. That helps if I actually do that, doesn't it? Good evening, all. Oh, this he says trying to get comfortable on here is going to be the last show of the year and uh, will be the Christmas quiz once everybody else gets their backside and gear actually joins us. Oh, and whilst I do that, I got somebody trying to drink my Kahlua. Meet Yoda. This is Yoda. Meet your adoring fans. There you go. That's Yoda. You can go back over there. And here's <laughs> Jab Jabba. Here's Jabba the Hut. Say and uh, Finley, can you say hello to the people out there? Oh, yeah, you have to ring no, the doorbell. No. Hello, doorbell. everybody. Oh, doorbell. ring the doorbell. Ding ding. High five. Hello. Hi Mark, you're right, mate. So I've got oh, I don't know if you saw. This is Yoda. Oh, and he keeps trying to drink my Christmas Kahlua. This here is. Amorella. 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 R U L A. Umbrella. Umbrella. Yes. So I look like a crackhead. And I must say thank you very much to uh, Sheldon, Mum and Dad, for getting it for Christmas. Awesome. So and uh, somebody opened it before Christmas. You told me to. <laughs> yeah, you did. You went, Dad. Please, please, Dad, just just have one. So I've got to try and keep the questions hidden for the quiz because she's doing it and hopefully Lindsay's doing it. Wayne, I have no idea what's happened to Wayne. I sent him the link and uh, said, join me in about five minutes and he gave me a thumbs up. I'm going to turn the Christmas tree back. Yeah. The, um, you guys do it at home as well. Yeah. Everybody get a pen and paper and uh, I nearly got knocked out by my Sorry. grandson then. And uh, we'll do this at home with you. But uh, yeah, I have no idea where Wayne is and Mrs. Wayne. But I like where the light switch is. But yeah, so we have uh, Sheldon in the kitchen and Taylor in here. Well, so many jokes, I'm just not going to do he's it. He's been doing really good. He made all the meatballs. You made the meat? Oh, he's a good cook anyway. So are you. I mean, you've had a, what, a bun here baking away for... Ten oh, months yeah. almost. Ten months in six days. Ooh. So anyway, happy Christmas to you all. And I hope you all have a really good one in a to few days' time. To all a good night. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> So, um, I we can don't say, have to start right now. We can tell no, I know. I've, I've got absolutely no idea what's going on with Wayne. Uh, we just have a letter. Let me just. Uh, no, 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 no Sorry. idea. No, he may be putting the kids to bed. He may, yeah. he may have got drunk. He may be having dinner. He may fall on off the sofa in a drunken stupor, and Mrs. Wayne may be looking at him, shaking Mrs. her head Wayne. and wondering where she went. I don't think she, she likes being called Mrs. Wayne. So, and oh, with Danger Cat's back. Right, he keeps trying to drink this. Here he comes. He's, he's, he's making his way over. That's hot tea. That's going to not be good for you. Dear, dear. And uh, what was I going to say? Um, is thank this you. This is Mark still watching. That's his little hey, Mark. Yes. How are you? Is that I know. Mm. Thank you. Yes. Look at that butthole. The, ki the kitten's not mine. Really not mine. I do have trousers on. I think. Mm -mm. But, oh, there's Sheldon. Well, hello, Sheldon. Get out my drink. Get out my drink. Uh, the kitten, not Sheldon. And I do not have alcohol. I have juice. Tell us juice. Sensible. <laughs> Did you see your face? Look. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Mrs. Mark. My Mrs. Mark. Not your Mrs. Mark. My Mrs. Mark. There you go. That's Mrs. Mark. Who hopefully will be... What are you doing? I'm going for a cigarette. You're going for a cigarette, but you're, you're going to be joining us for the quiz. At, at yes, point. I did tell her earlier she came in for the quiz. Just pull a chair around there. Yeah, I'll we'll just sit there at the table. I'm going to be oh. eating my dinner while we do this. Hang on, look. You see that? He thinks he's a, he thinks he's a, a baby. He's either there or he's curled up in the uh, crib over in the corner there. Yeah. And uh, you see where he goes, goes, you, 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 and over there's the crib, and he normally curls up there. Moses bust. Moses, same thing, curls up over there. There you go. So yeah, no idea what's happened to Wayne. I do have some thirty-three questions to ask. Some of them are funny. I did try and get rude ones, but quite frankly, I, I thought no, the show shouldn't go that direction. Mm, yes. No, mm, no, it shouldn't yeah. go that way at all. Very little. Yes. Uh, hey. Hey, we're the monkeys. You do. I say you got pregnant. <gasps> there we are. My God, hello. Here we go. Look, look, look. Hello, good and Did you get um, 
<laughs> you lose track of time. No, it's putting the kids to bed. Nine o'clock's a bad time. Yeah, we thought uh, so. Don't worry, we were just, just chatting crap anyway. No, the Squidly, Squidly's go to bed. They're, well, Tamsin's had an all-day at nursery today for the first time, so we had to take her to bed. Of course, now she's sharing with Chloe. They're going to bed at the same times now, and um, we have to read them a bedtime story first before we can do anything else. Oh, it's, been it's been absolute chaos, because no sooner have I finished reading the story, I've then got to go and see Aethon and make sure he settles down all right. And then, obviously, once I've done that, I can then come downstairs. So it's all been fun. It's all right. Like I say, we've just been chatting random nonsense. And uh, yeah. introducing the world to Yoda as well. I need yeah. to tell Ellen the news. We're not telling everyone. But I'll tell Ellen and she can tell you about tomorrow. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. I'm not, I am sworn to secrecy. I can't say anything yet. We, we just have to see what's happening. But I've got 33 questions. Is that all right? I ain't got one, so. <laughs> I thought you were doing one for us, lot. I, yeah, but if you read your messages, I did state on my message that we haven't had the time. No, it's fine. It's fine. 33 is going to do an hour anyway. Yeah. Because we, we've been flying around doing all sorts, and I've had me book to get done, and I've been doing housework and stuff in between all of that as well. And I've, I've worked it out now. If I can average 2,000 words a day, I'll meet my Christmas Eve target. Good job, but... I don't so just want write that word and then hit repeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About thirty pages worth of hello. Hello, he said seductively with echo. They walked up to the entrance of the cave. Hello, 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 hello. hello. <laughs> For twenty odd pages. No, uh, I'm at. I've got to the stage now. I'm seventeen and a half thousand words at the moment. Is which good? is about 56, I think it's 56 pages worth. Oh, there you go. So seven, seven, 17,500 words, but I need to get to around 100,000. Well, you've only got, you ain't got that much to do, really. So, well, what am I about 100,000? Sorry, 100 pages. So it works out about 30,000. Okay, all right. So I've got 13,000, roughly 13,000 words to get done by Thursday. I, I rather think that with the amount of vocabulary you talk and I talk, you could probably get it done so in, in, in no problem. Yeah, but like I said, the problem is is when you've got other things to do as well. I mean, Nathan's had to self-isolate for the last two weeks. Yeah, we had that. Uh, there, so he's been at home, so I've been dealing with, with him and then I've been helping Ellen with the housework and, and everything else that's needed to be done. So I've been up till now. I've been averaging one and a half thousand words per day. But it's going to be worse tomorrow. I'm not going to get anything done tomorrow because I've got Ellen's going out for the day, and I'm left with all four children. Uh, you're definitely not getting anything done tomorrow. So nothing's getting done tomorrow. But is Ellen going to join in um, doing the quiz? She, she, well, she'll probably end up joining in a bit of the way through because she's she's upstairs with Tamsin still, so. Does it look better, the camera being further away like it is here? To be honest, I haven't noticed it. It doesn't look any different. Because it was quite close and we were kind of sitting. Hello, Does mine look any different if I do it this way round? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put well, some you... black tape. I'm going to put some black tape over the kitchen lights so it doesn't. Blur out my face. There you go. This is why when we were upstairs, I had to turn the bedroom light off and, and use a torch because it was when I shaved my head and the light beams on it, it's just like Jesus, you know, change <laughs> retinas. And nobody, all you can see is this bright light. You switch on to watch the yeah. show. I like doing it down, down, down here. I do, I prefer doing it down in there. So, yeah, just much better, a bit, a bit more refined. <laughs> and there's there's just me sitting in my kitchen. <laughs> well, to be honest, if we could get the dining table and chairs in our kitchen, I'd be sat in a sat in it. But we got a, a galley kitchen. It's long, but it's now quite narrow, isn't it? Really. Yeah. Narrow. But our front room's massive, so. You know. right. Problem is, if I if I sit in the living room, you can guarantee that Freddie's going to wake up. So I'd have the yeah. perfect backdrop. I've got the Christmas lights and the Christmas tree, so you know I've got the perfect backdrop, but. 
not the perfect audience inside the living room. Where's well, like my strange haircut I've got going on here at the moment, you know. Uh, we've had to turn the lights off because otherwise the camera goes and spazzes out and blurs and because it's trying to um, get the lights it's in. It's a nice mullet. It's a nice mullet. Yeah, it's a Christmas mullet. Well, that's mullet. typical. Someone's yeah. just tried calling oh, me and called, killed my sound. No, we can hear you. Yeah, I can't hear you. I've got a lovely... Oh, oh, my, oh. Mr. Casey's trying to call me. Trying to go away. Don't bugger off. Yeah, I've got a lovely green mullet. Does that mean I've got to start fancying my cousin? <laughs> he doesn't... Uh, the problem is I'm, I'm going to have to leave the studio and come back in again. No worries, mate. It's all right. Bear with me, though, but what I'll do is I'll message him first, telling me to leave me away. I'm live. Yeah, no problem. There's been an ongoing issue down at uh, down in Bristol. Uh, paranormal team is going out from a tier three area into a tier two area and holding a public event. Oh, yeah. And they're not social distancing. They're not yeah. wearing face masks. And yet the police and the council won't do anything about it. And they've gone to oh. Shepton Mallet Prison tonight. And Shepton yeah. Mallet Prison are letting them get on with it. So, okay. Oh. That's, uh, see who catches COVID first, then. A bit like Parcel Parcel. Yeah. Right. I'll just send him a message telling him to leave me alone. Right. So, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to hang on. Let's see if I can do something with the camera. Ladies and gentlemen, whilst Mr. Wayne fiddles with his knobs, um, we shall uh, talk about the quiz. We're going to do... I was, oh, he's gone. He'll be back in a minute. Quick, do that, do that. Like, he's not looking, he's not looking. Anyway, we're going to do 33 questions in the Christmas quiz. Oh, he's back, he's back. There you go, there you go. We weren't doing any you. at all, but I'll be back, it's fine. I can hear you now. <laughs> But yeah, um, you always get some. You you get. Uh, don't get me started on it. You get some idiot in the paranormal world, especially since the lockdowns have been going on, and they've got. You know what? We must get paid by Facebook. Let's go out and investigate, or something like that. Yeah, but this uh, this guy is claiming that he's an actual company. Only no one can find him on Company's House or HMRC. Oh. He claims he's a sole trader, so he doesn't have a sole trader does not have to register with company's house. However, they Perhaps do he have means to he register. likes blues music. Perhaps he means he likes blues music and he sells yeah. t-shirts with reggae and ska on it. But they do have to register with HMRC, and of course this guy hasn't because Hello. no one can find hey, him. Mrs. Wayne. Bear with and, me. Um, My three-year-old is still awake. Okay, are you gonna join in with the quiz? Yeah. Um Give me a few minutes. She's being a nightmare. That's all right. We're, we're, we're just chewing the fat anyway, yeah. so yeah. join in whenever. Um, so, yeah, so the, I think it was last week or the week before he went to Shepton Mallet Prison and he was doing live feeds and it was always at the floor. All you could see was people's feet. So you couldn't really see anything. So you can't enjoy a live feed of someone's feet. Um, and I when he did accidentally, can, uh... some people pay lots of money for that, <laughs> yes, yeah, we know. Um, mm. and when he did actually pan up to see the people that were there, they were all holding hands. What but they were doing a human pendulum, oh, were they? Uh, right, okay, and yeah, they yeah. were all holding hands. So, of course, the woman in the middle wasn't wearing a face mask, and then we noticed the people around the ring weren't wearing a face mask. So not only were they not social distancing, they weren't wearing face masks. Idiot. So, of course, the authorities have been notified about it. Shepton Mallet's been notified about it. This guy is also doing another, um, doing a charity event at um, some place uh, mm -hmm. beginning of January or mid-January. And he's saying he's doing it all for charity, and yet the charity don't know who it is. They know nothing oh. about it. That sounds um, like a scam. Uh, yeah, the, the, the letters S-C-A-M come to mind. Yeah, but this is what we're trying to let the police and, and the authorities know, that, that this guy hasn't even got the permission from the, 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 the charity to, to actually advertise 
their name. Mm -hmm. He even went as far as contacting one of the families who have been affected by whatever it is this charity are dealing with yeah. without the charity's permission or knowledge. And they've told him to stop advertising their charity for his event, and he's still doing it. Some people have no more. The, tr yeah, the trouble is, it's p people like that that give people like us a bad name. <coughs> exactly. Like, same with you the know, bikers. You get these odd few that are, oh, how shall I put it, original old school stuff, everything. And it's it's that yeah. that gives the rest of us a really bad name, you know. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're doing the best thing. We've cancelled all our events or suspended them. We've given people credit notes and or refunds mm -hmm. and things like that. And yet this guy seems to think that he can go from a tier three area into a tier two area with a group of people from separate households from tier three to tier two areas. And the police just aren't interested. You know, and it is now law that they can now be prosecuted for breaching the COVID regulations. Yeah, if I threw a party now and invited like 15 of my good friends, guaranteed exactly. certain people would ring up the police and we'd, we'd be nicked right. for it. So the argument there is, is if you're trying to promote grassing people up for breaching COVID regulations and having a dedicated phone line or website for it, why aren't they doing anything about it when people report them? You know, you think that's the whole idea. That's the reason why they've set these websites up. I mean, me personally, I don't bother. I just let people get on with it. You know, it's down to them. If they get caught, they get caught. That's down to them. Certainly wouldn't be phoning up the police and saying, oh, Michael at the road's got a party of 40 people in his back garden and then sit at the front garden and watch the police turn up. You know, that's, that's, that's not me. Having your but, own party where you've invited six people or less. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if they want to, if they want to put people's lives at risk, that's down to them. But when it's uh, something that the public are, you know, they're being led to believe they're doing this for charity or they're doing this as a favour for someone, they're going out to enjoy themselves, but they're not actually realising they're breaking the regulations, and this guy isn't even a legitimate company. They're giving him forty or fifty pounds per ticket to go to a, a paranormal investigation. That he's holding illegally, yeah, and yet he's making he's it. making the money from it and getting away with it. It'll eventually come back. It'll eventually come back. Well, this is this is what I say. I mean, a few nasty letters have gone to Nicola Sturgeon about allowing ghost people people going into Scotland and doing live feeds from there. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Say no group. more. Say no but, more. Um, but, yes, yeah, so, I mean, it, it is quite annoying when, when you see groups do that and you wouldn't have minded so much if they were legitimate groups, but this bloke, he's not registered with HMRC and, and or Companies House. Well, uh, may I say, uh, forget that. It's supposed to be the Christmas quiz pr yeah. uh, program. That's it's Christmas. Oh, let's, uh, um, I would say aliens, but I'll go, Christmas! The next so. radio show. There'll be a there'll be a Finley here. There'll, there'll be, be a Finley. grandson here in the next show. Hey. It'll be time. There'll be there'll be are a Finley going, here. Are you going to be induced? Well, on the thirtieth, because I've been uh, I've got like the beginnings of preeclampsia. They've said yep. if he's not here by then, they're going to induce me on the thirtieth. But if my symptoms get any worse, they're going to induce me like like that. Oh, so so the thing is, is it, if you're going to hold off to the 30th when they, they actually start the process, you may actually end up with a 2021 baby. <laughs> That's so weird to think. <gasps> oh, no. I, no, he can't be born in a millennium, right? <laughs> no, he can't be born in a millennium. You were a millennium baby. <laughs> I was going to say, you can't have a millennium baby because that's, you know... 980 odd years away. We'll just get Star Trek Discovery, won't it? And we'll just nick that ship and stop. Yeah, really. <laughs> oh, Would don't you... start me on that. I've been watching Star Trek Discovery. That's quite cool. That's the one I'm on about. It. It's just, oh, I love the program, but there's just something about it recently has really just niggled me. I'm not going to say what it is because it's rather controversial, but I'll I don't talk know. To you I think Bit, bit like time travel then, going backwards and forwards, you know, and you're like, oh, hang on a minute, all the newer Star Treks ain't even mentioned all that. 
No, no, he's got nothing to do with it's that. I'll, I'll, else, I'll mention yeah, it. I'll mention it afterwards it when, we, when we're not yeah. live. Okay. So otherwise, otherwise, I'm gonna have to go. But um. Oh, we got Mark, Carl and Mark with us. Yeah, there's somebody else in there as well. But Mark knows what I was talking about because I was around his house here the other day, weren't we? And we were talking about it. And he, was it? he was agreeing the same with me, like, oh bloody hell, yeah, you know. So, shall we start the quiz? Do I need a pen and paper? You'll need a pen and paper. Oh, poo. Um, no, no, I'd rather you use. No, 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 I don't need one of them. I've got my. Oh, I've got, got my right right on 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 That just shows you the level of people we have on this show. Right, what sense does this make? Right, I've got me paper, uh, an envelope, yeah. okay, and I've got me pen. Now, what sense does that make? It's golden, gold, it's, isn't it? It's the same colour as the bloody paper. Like that makes sense. That's my, that's my autograph that. pen. <laughs> that's my autograph, autograph pen. May help. Right. Got it. There you go. I'm not Anybody... sponsoring Grace tonight. <laughs> I'm, I'm sponsoring uh, Amarula. Amarula. Well, I suppose I'll have, to spo I'll have to be sponsored by Tesco's Apple Squash because that's the only drink I've got near me at the moment. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's I don't know. No, no, I haven't. No, change, change that. Tesco's Dandelion and Burdock. Oh, oh, well. I love Dandelion and Burdock. Ethan, right. Ethan's newfound flavour. Anyway. You're doing this as well, yeah? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. yeah. This yeah. is Ellen. Yes. Question number one. Yeah, Mrs. Right. Rain will be down soon. It's 1 to 33. Oh. Do we have any other takers? Uh, are you going to be doing the quiz? Yes, yeah, we just sit here. We say even, evening to dawn. Oh, hello, Dawn. Hi, Dawn, you're right. There is Taylor to the Raft, the man responsible for the state my daughter's in. <laughs> and <laughs> Linda Ratty. Hello. Right. And, of course, Taylor and her dinner. Look at the state of it. You know, it's supposed to be writing questions down, don't you? Yeah. Answers. Right. Thank you. Would you, do you want a, a pen and paper? No, no, no I'll just go on the next one. Would you just, just, just write? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We haven't got any oh, Christmas. Yeah. We, we should have had some Christmas music in the background. We see those sleigh bells ring a ding, 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 ding. -a -ling. Lindsay's just oh, going to find no, Lindsay's no, just going to find Taylor, them. Taylor, you've got to stop that because I just started whistling it as you started singing it. <laughs> Lindsay's just so showing. Spooky. Lindsay's just got, going on the We've got to stop doing that. <laughs> She's just finding some music. I can't you, believe you, you started singing that as I was whistling it. That is just really spooky. Oh, way, <laughs> That's Elvis. You know, think about it though. I could have, I could have started whistling "We Wish You a Merry Christmas" or "Silent Night," but it had to be that same song. Oh, Carl! Carl, are you going to join in the quiz? Hang on. Oh shit! All right, hang on. Let's... Well, yeah, we should we should say anybody that's watching us live now, if you get a piece of paper and pen handy. Yeah, you're more than welcome to join in. Thirty-three questions. Or so. Right. And that's Mariah Carey who's just stopped singing. I good. don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's a thing. Good thing. <laughs> no, we're See, supporting she's... lad. We're supporting lad baby this year. Don't stop me eating. He is annoying. He is annoying, but it's a good song. Who's that? Lad baby. Lad baby. Uh, right. All of the French going towards, um, towards food. Back. He's doing the All don't the stop food. me oh. eating. It's quite, quite. It's actually better than the other two. But he's got a two-day deadline to get to number one for Christmas. I mean, is it? Is it literally? Don't stop yeah, me, me eating. That. Yeah. Yeah. Released. It was released today. It is Who it's pretty good. Who are they? The, 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 oh, what are they called? The Darkness. That's it. The Christmas one. The Darkness did. Right. If you're ready with your pen and paper, I shall Ellen give you is, a Ellen's, question Ellen's, one. Ellen's in the house. Um, Ellen's in the house. Just be over there for two minutes. Because... Comes and it's just really stressful. Right, so she she gets to have the cigarette and I've got to wait. Blooming child. Oh, no, oh, 
<laughs> anyway. No, and then we got a live feed at nine o'clock. What's she do? Uh, yep. Don't blame me, Glenn. Tamsin and Crummy for messing about. Right, let's get started. I'll start, Eli. You can catch up whenever you want, Ellen. Right, question one. Which part of his body, and this is an easy one, which part of his body did musician Gene Simmons insure for $1 million? Oh. Yeah. I've got to keep this like this because I can't let them see the answer. I don't know how to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that your no. But I know what you mean. Gene Simmons. Okay. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Right. You ready for question two? Yep. Hang on. Let's get rid of someone's image blurring my 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 uh, phone. There we go. Okay. Question two. <clears throat> what facially do Fred Fred Flintstone and Betty Rubble have that Wilma and Barney don't? Hey. Excuse me, Mister Quizmaster. Can you repeat that, please? What facially do Fred Flintstone and Betty Rubble have? That Wilma and Barney don't. And please don't say a pearl necklace. <laughs> <laughs> she got it. Well, no, that's what I'm going to go with. Yeah? I think that's it. Yeah, um, Mark, Mark, Mark needs to write his on a piece of paper. <laughs> Yeah, Mark, you're doing them in the comments and everyone can see. <laughs> yeah, Mark, write it down <laughs> a piece of paper on your phone, mate. <laughs> um, right. Number three. Which game, which was demonstrated on television in 1966, and it's, it's a board game, did competitors accuse of being sex in a box? Give me something stupid, isn't it? Are you going to join in? Board game. Yeah. Can you repeat that? Right. Um, what what which board game, game, game was demonstrated in the 60s and was described as being sex in a box? And he sounded just like me when he said that. <laughs> hmm. Really? Done. <laughs> so I've just seen Taylor's answer, and I'm not. I'm not going to say what it yeah. is. Mm -hmm. Oh my okay. god! Is it? Yeah. Right. Number four, and this is real. Who has the lowest IQ? A moron, an imbecile. An idiot or the person who's just drained my bottle of Amarula? <laughs> <laughs> I'll read that one again. Um, who has the lowest IQ? And this is actually a real thing. It's done on a scale. Is it a moron, an imbecile, or an idiot? It can't be the first one because that's a religious person. Oh, no, that's a mormon. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it first, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I must be an imbecile. Um, well, the imbeciles were an island race, weren't they? If my memory says me right. Seals. Seals. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. Right. We are ready. Yeah. Number five. Which sex symbol first appeared in the six minutes long 1930 film Dizzy Dishes? Sex symbol? Yeah. It, it, the question might be... I can't really give any clues because it would give it away. It might, for me. it might be a bit misleading. It's not Marilyn Monroe, I can tell you that. Um. Um, lots of ladies get tattoos of this particular person. <gasps> what you know this, on a mobile phone. Yeah, but I'm writing answers. I'm not on anything else. Had a squeaky voice. 
And we're supposed to be doing this together, and yet you're doing it separately. That makes a lot of sense, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's definitely fine. Well, that's the last time I share answers with her, then. <laughs> I'll give you another clue. I'll give you another clue. There was no, a singer need... in the 90s with don't the same it. name. No, you're just giving it away now, you Wally. I fucking have this, mate. <laughs> Thank you. Bill and I are clueless. Okay. I'm going to skip that one. <laughs> Number six, the UK's Dyslexia Research Trust is based in which British city? Oh, I don't know that one. I can't spell it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I've got no other one. I can't spell it. Um, Although now it makes sense. You get it? My mind's gone blank. <laughs> okay. Number seven. It originally meaning dried dung hanging from the wall on a shaft is commonly used in colloquial Australian English to refer to an eccentric person with poor social skills. Oh. <laughs> Look what I put. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that. <laughs> Would you like more thoughts? <laughs> oh. You're done? Hmm. I said Okay. Number eight. What colour is the most let no how can I what colour is most toilet paper in France? <laughs> Don't say brown. <laughs> It's in the same colour that it was in the shops because they don't use toilet paper. They're always using bidets. <laughs> it's the one that when you go to buy Lou Roll in the shops, you can only get this colour. <laughs> this is a serious one. Oh, no. Um, Hang on, this. Can you hear everyone. it? Go away. Just get your you got it? Really? Okay. No, no. Save, save, save oh, me. I'm going to eat it. Right. I tried my best not to take a dump in France. <laughs> that was question eight. Are you ready for question nine now? Yathan? If you're discombobulated, what are you? Now, I taught you this with martial arts, so you should know this. Oh, my God. <sighs> my knob, it, it's there. It's there. It just doesn't want to come to me. Read my mind. See, you just left your side open with so many jokes there. It doesn't want to come to me. And I was just about to say, is that what he said when he was trying to make another kid? Um. Anyway. Um, um, um. <laughs> Um, Sherlock Holmes uses it in one of his films. He, he slaps a guy and says, I discombobulated him. I made him a bitch. It's a lovely word. I, I love that word. Discombobulated. discombobulated. I can imagine Stephen Fry saying it. Mm. Discombobulated. All done? Hang on. Ah! Oh, it wrong. Hey, what this populate? What did you spell it? We are at question. <laughs> question we've just done question quiz. I'll read it out one more time. If you're discombobulated, what are you? That's question nine. Snow is falling. That's the bunny. Right. <laughs> Um, which four-letter word ending in K means to have intercourse? Oh, wank. 
That's social that. distancing. <laughs> what four-letter word in the UK is for social intercourse? Which four-letter wank? word in the UK means to have intercourse? She said wank. That being socially distancing intercourse. <laughs> Um, there is, yeah, there is. Wait, why are you looking at me like I'm stupid? I'll read it out again. I think some did of the you, people did, listening in. Oh, did you did you say you read it? I'll, read, I'll read it out again. You can't see the answers. I can see she's right. I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. I'll read it out again. Question 10. Which four-letter word ending in K means to have intercourse? Am I wrong? Am I wrong? <coughs> Am I wrong? Is that wrong? I can't I can't be biased, so I'm not saying shit. <laughs> If Ellen is looking the answers up, no, yeah. she's not. She's no, thinking. No, you, you can't really see that, but I'm not. There are answers. Um, <laughs> she's actually writing the question down. Oh. It, it, it helps me to see it to get an yeah, answer. Yeah. If you get what I mean. Okay. Right. I'll, read it, I'll read it out one last time. <coughs> the question 10, which four-letter word Seven. ending in K means to have intercourse? And he says that just as his 12-year-old son walked into the room. Went, oh. <laughs> yes. I think it might be a trick question. Hmm. I should call him Mini-Me. Right. Question 11. Which, which humorous engineering unit is defined as a third of a horsepower or equivalent to 250 watts? And I never I, knew about this until I, I, I looked at uh, Is this the one that I told you about? No. I'll read it out again. Which humorous engineering unit is defined as a third of a horsepower? Now, I'll give you a clue. Think along the lines of horses and what they are. Hmm. Excuse me. Is it me? No. Oh, I was right. Is huh. right? I think we might have to cancel on that one. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Oh, Which one? Question. The one. Yeah, the one you just read out. Question eleven. All right, just think four legged beast. So, if, if, so if, a horse is, uh, if a horse is strong and you've got horsepower, what would be the equivalent of a third of a horsepower? I don't know what I said then, but. It's all right, Ellen's just sucked all the oxygen out of here. <laughs> Think. Yeah. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Right. Complete this Billy Connolly quote. Billy Connolly's one of my favourite comedians. Uh, he used to live near us. Was it Billy, Con Billy Connolly? <laughs> no, no, ignore me. Right. Anyway, complete this Billy Connolly quote. My definition of an intellectual is someone who can listen to the William Tell Overture without thinking of blank. I won't give you any clues to this one. I don't know. Do you know what the William Tell Overture <laughs> is? Uh, it helps if you know how to, how it goes. I guess, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> can you read the quote again? 
Speak to us what we've My definition of an intellectual <clears throat> is someone who can listen to the William Twell over William Tell overture without thinking of blank. If you know the tune, you'll get it. What's the tune? Um, hang on. I think. Yeah. Well, I just think of. Got it? Sort of. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I don't care if we don't finish at ten o'clock. It's 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 the Christmas wait. one. We have Christmas wait, wait, music wait, wait, in the wait. background we as well. Have to go and do spooky nori at ten. I don't know. Have you got to do spooky nori tonight, no. mate? No, right, no, cool. not until not until um, not until uh, Christmas Eve. You've had yeah, make well. sure to plug it on my thing, and I'll I'll stick it on there. No, that's alcohol. Right. Yeah. Question thirteen: An orchidometer. An orchidometer is a medical instrument used to measure which part of the male body? An orchidometer. <laughs> Can you try not saying that without spitting <laughs> your food everywhere, you filthy mare? <laughs> An orchidometer is a medical instrument used to measure which part of the male <laughs> body. Meanwhile, Taylor's choking. <laughs> from what can be measured I don't know I think I can spell tonight sorry she can't spell same right number 14 what was Buzz Aldrin's mother's rather appropriate maiden name who Buzz Aldrin, Buzz Aldrin. Aldrin. one of the first men on the moon what was his uh I've lost it. Oh, here we are. What was Buzz Aldrin's mother's rather appropriate maiden name? So before she got married, what was her surname? Hi, Andy. It wasn't Aldrin. Hi, Andy. Oh, hi, Andy, mate. You're right. That was question 14. I'll say it again for those of you who've just joined us and that want to join in. What was Buzz Aldrin's mother's rather appropriate maiden name? And I'll give you a clue. It wasn't Aldrin. <laughs> it was before she got married. Yes. Ooh, stupid cat. Nearly fell off the box. good times. Come on. Sorry. It's in here. Come here, you little shit. I was gonna I was gonna show everybody um Yoda again, but he's hiding. Oh no, here he is. Nope. He's gone. Right Hide under the table, I will. Mm. But with me, you will not. Ready for the next one? Yes. Number fifth, question 15. What quality in a man is a sapiosexual lady most attracted to? A pout. <laughs> what quality in a man is a sapiosexual lady most attracted to? Uh, turned on by. No, and we're not talking any of these. I'm a boy. I'm a girl. I'm I'm a clothes peg. We're not talking any of that nonsense. It's what what a sapiosexual. What is it that turns a woman on the most? Yeah, I think oh, that's what I tried to use. Me. Kangaroos, what's going on? Why are you thinking kangaroos? Little, little pouches, innit? Men don't have pouches, you dozy bugger. You haven't studied a fucking man. I am a man. Last time I had looked, I looked at all the pouches. Bend over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the last time he looked, he yeah, had question 13. <laughs> yeah. I put two answers down. Is that okay? Yeah, you can do it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, it's because I said one answer and Ellen says another. Well, you, you're both doing your own one anyway, so. 
Um, what I'll do is if you've both got two answers written down for the same question, I'll give you half a point for the correct one, all right? <coughs> well, I think they pretty much mean the same thing. Don't they? Question 16. This one I like. In 2017, a species of insect was named by scientist Vazric Nazari after Donald Trump because its yellowish white head scales reminded him of him. The species is called ne uh, Neop Neopalpa Donald Trumpy. <laughs> there is. <laughs> oh. I'll read it again. Named in 2017 by scientist Vazric Nazari, because of its yellowish white head scales, they reminded him of Donald Trump's hair. What species of insect is Neopala Donald Trumpy? Oh. We're all thanks, Did you mate. you say insect? Yes, insect. We're all thanks, mate, Dad just said. Uh, that's for Andy, yeah. We're all good, thanks, mate. Yeah. <laughs> that's what Dad meant. We're all thanks, mate. We're, we're all good for fuck bag. Fuck bag. Fuck bag. Fuck bag. Good anger, but a banger. Um, insect. It's an insect, yeah. But what insect? What insect is the Donald Trumpy? No. <laughs> you're not looking at us. Oh, sorry, I should my answer. I'm not going to tell you the answer. You write down what you think the answer is. I did, because I didn't listen. I'll, I'll read it out one last time. Named in 2017 by scientist Vazric Nazari, because its yellowish white head scales reminded him of Donald Trump's What hair. insect has head scales? What species of insect is Neopalpa Donald Trumpy? I'd say the farting beetle with the noise, like with a sound like that, Trumpy, eh? I was, I was going to say a dung beetle. There's a kitten on my lap. I don't know why, but I was going to say butterfly, but I know it's wrong. Flies have scales. Just doesn't narrow it down. Why do you think I'm holding this like oh, this so they can't see the oh. answers? Oh. Okay. Right, question 17. This, this is quite a good one. Would you weigh lighter or the same or more standing on the equator than you would at either the North or the South Pole? Would you weigh, would you be lighter? Would you weigh same lighter, the same or more at the equator than you would at either of the poles? And when I say either of the poles, I don't mean your Polish mate and his missus. <laughs> Look at my knee, Dad. You could put, I don't know if you can see it. No, I had the last one. Yeah. Of course she finished her dinner. It's says, Taylor, look at her. That's not a baby. That's just food in there. She's making me hungry and I've had my dinner. <laughs> I've had mine and all. Oh. Shall I read it out one last time for those of you at home? Um, would you weigh lighter the same or more at the equator than you would at either of the North or the South Pole. It reminds me of a video I saw. We all know about your video preferences, my dear. We don't wish to discuss them here. Give me the kitchen. Give me the kitchen a minute. No, leave For those of you who haven't no. seen him. He's gone. Thank you. Here comes Yoda. Okay, now Yoda's buggered off. So oh, no, here he is. Here he is. Here's Yoda. Here's Yoda, ladies and gentlemen. Grogu. Hello. <laughs> right. Are, you, are we all done with that question? <coughs> yeah. Right. This one's Shadow. Oh, Shadow. Hello, Shadow. I've seen you before, young man. Great. Lady. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ready for question 18? Yeah. Uh, which phrase meaning energetic labor dates back to the 17th century when it was used in print for the first time by the English poet Andrew Marvel? 
phrase meaning energetic labor. Even I don't know this one. I'm just going to have a look. <laughs> How are we going to know it? Really? Oh, okay. Oh, um, it, I'll give you a clue. It's when you're really working. Say you've got like, you're standing down the car and you get, you get, you get to a really bad bit and you've got to really stick your back into it. I don't know, write it down. I don't have to go. You're done? I oh, you're bringing me. All right. My mom. Sorry, can you repeat that? My mum keeps trying to ring me. <laughs> Which phrase, meaning energetic labour, dates back to the 17th century when it's first used in print? And then give you an example. And an example is, is when you've got to get a stubborn stain out or whatever and you've really got to stick your back into it to get rid of it. I don't know what was doing then, but I just got a vision into his uh, home life there. That's more or less a word. No, what was that? Social distance. <laughs> <laughs> it's the word, have you heard of you heard? It's got boo, it's got mean, and do, 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 do. Sorry. Why can't I spell today? Got that tune in my head for some reason. Uh, why did you turn the music down and turn the music off? I can hear you. I'm a time traveller. I've been to the 17th century. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll see your decoy pipe and raise you another. Right. <laughs> Number 19. What sort of tax was introduced by Henry VIII in 1535? Oh, oh I, admit, I, did, I did know this one. Oh, Alfie knew this one, didn't he? Yes, but don't say anything. It's not that anyway. Um, oh, yeah. <sighs> what tax was introduced by Henry VIII in 1535? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you see, I wouldn't have to pay it because I've got one. No, no, that was your other <laughs> I wonder what it is. But it's was a merkin it? tax. It's a merkin tax. The thing is, the thing is, I wonder if I'd have to research it on whether it was just one particular type or was it all of them? I think it was, as far as I remember, it was all of them. I think it didn't matter which one it was. It was all of them. Okay. Right. Text himself. I've got one. Okay, this is a bit of an odd one. Number 20. <clears throat> what act links Norman soldiers at the Battle of Creasy in 1346, footballer Jerry Barton at Goodison Park in 2006, and Ukrainian Vitaly Sedyuk at the 2017 Eurovision Song Contest? Playing dead. I've got no idea. Let's have a look. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Uh, I'll read a question out again, and then I'll give you I'll give you a hint after that. All right. Um, what oh. act and it, what act links? Can you shush? Thank you. What act links Norman soldiers at the Battle of Creasy in 1346? Footballer Jerry Barton at Goodison Park in 2006. And Ukrainian Vitaly Sedyuk at the 2017 Eurovision Song Contest. And I can give you another example, um, which I think will probably give it away, but I'll give you a clue in a second. It was a clue now. I have no bloody idea. Jarvis Cocker did it on a Michael Jackson song. The problem, the problem is you've just asked an Everton fan that question. Sorry? You've just asked an Everton fan that question. Yeah, just write the answer down. I don't do football, sir. The hint, Jarvis Cocker did it on a Michael Jackson video. What kid? Was it the Brit no, Awards? Kids. No, no. Basically, he jumped on the stage while Michael, Michael Jackson was singing Earth Song and did this. <laughs> No, originally it was supposed to be Michael Jackson when he went, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> Killing my leg. Right. Okay. Well, my now, this one is, is quite an easy one if, if you think about it. Question 21. Tom's father has five sons. The first four are 10, then their names are 10, 20, 30, and 40. What was the name of the fifth son? Say that again. Right. Tom's father has five sons, yeah? We've got five, five sons. Now, the first four sons are named 10, 20, 30, and 40. What was the fifth son called? Don't say it out loud. Don't say it out loud. Because you'll ruin it because people can hear you. That was question 22. I can see the wheels going around there. <laughs> Ellen was like that. And you can see it. Do, 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 do. What question are we on? What number? Should be 22. Yeah. No, we are, hang on. 21. We are on 21. 21. 21 was uh, Joey Barton one, wasn't it? No, that was number 20. You missed the question somewhere, mate. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Have you all got it? Everybody at no. home? No, I've just written down the answer to the last question. No. <laughs> all right. I'll read it out one last time. I'll read it out one last time. Right. Tom's father has five sons. Yeah, he's got he's got five sons. Now the first four sons are named ten. The next son's named twenty. The next son's named thirty, and the next son's named forty. What is the name of the fifth son? Gerard Butler. That's right. Bob. Okay, you're done. Right, number twenty-two. Um, what nickname was given to Rembrandt's The Night Watch after it was over restored in the 1940s? <clears throat> you might know this one. What, what nickname was given to Rembrandt's painting The Night Watch after it was mistakenly over restored in the 1940s? Now, the clue is in, is in there. It, the, the clue is definitely. Uh, in there. I'm going to put this down, but. Who paints this? I don't know. Rembrandt, I just said. No, this. No, that's not him. No, no. No, that's. I can't think of what that Van Gogh, is. Van Gogh, isn't it? Who did the scream? That was Van Gogh, wasn't it? Yeah. I'll say it again. What nickname was given to Rembrandt the Night Watch after being oh, over restored a in the night? Yeah, after being overly restored in the 1940s. I don't know this one. I know one thing, I need a drink. Well, I, oh, we have just drained a bottle of Amarillo between myself and young Sheldon here. Chin -chin. You can't put one on your channel. Okay. The strongest stuff I've got is dandelion and burdock. Not off. Oh, steady. You're going to be violent and screaming and yelling and removing clothing and everything on camera just go steady and that's just Wayne <laughs> I tell you what after we did our drunk live feed I don't think I want to drink again <laughs> because <laughs> right <laughs> number 23 <laughs> question 23 I've got no competition I've got no competition now Ellen's out of action Oh, I just stubbed my little toe. <coughs> excuses, excuses. Shall we do question 23, boys and girls? Yeah. Yeah. All right. In Kent, there's a signpost which points to two places which, when you add them together, appears to be pointing to a quick lunch. Name the two places. Oh, no, it's not fuck's sake, no. No, it's not in there, can we? Yeah. I'll say it again. Is it like a saying for a quick lunch? No, no. It's right. an actual thing you can eat. In Kent, there's oh. a signpost which points to two different mm. places, which really appears to be pointing to a quick lunch. Name the two places. That may be one of the places. I thought so. I'm so clever. 
I'll give you a clue. Uh, I don't know if you'll know it or not, but there is a place in Somerset where you can go up in your car and it's a lookout place and it's something hill. And that something is the first bit of this. Don't yeah. say anything. <coughs> Turn up slightly, please. <coughs> You're done? Dollar, can you actually dollar. hear the music? Can you hear the music on there or not? No. No. Oh, bugger. Problem is, if you put copywritten music on streams, they tend to cut you off. It's Christmas, right? Are you ready for question twenty-four? Yeah. Yeah. Right, question 24. What is the most common natural object to be mistaken for a alien UFO? Let's see, I had to get one in there somehow. No, no, that, that, no that's what people think orbs are. Yeah. No, I'll say it again. What is the most common natural object to be mistaken for a UFO? What is the com most common natural object? It has to be this. There's no way it's anything else. Oh, Can you stop the cavalry? <laughs> Can you hear it now or not? No. Hey, hey, hey. I'm just going to check the answer on this because if it's what I think it is. Oh. oh, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You did that Yeah, you did it in time with the song. <laughs> yeah. yeah Taylor, we said about putting Christmas songs on. So Taylor right started here, singing the song and I started whistling at the same time. How freaky is that? That was just before you come downstairs. Right, uh, we are up to 25. 25. In which country are there six villages called Silly, 12 called Billy, and two called Pratt? Silly Billy Pratt. In Say what country? country? Yeah, in which country are there... See, I get away with everything on it. In which country are there six villages called Silly, 12 called Billy, and two called Pratt? I'm going to say this. It's either this or... Because they're the biggest things I can think of that would have that many options. I'm very wrong, aren't I? I, I can't tell you yes or no. A country. But I would say we think your answer. Billy, I can't think of it. Billy, Billy, silly, and Pratt. And it's it's not the UK. Yeah. It's not the UK. It's not the UK. Is Scotland in the UK? Yes, it's part of the the, the British the United Kingdom. If I put two countries down, can I get half a point? Yeah. Right. You get half a point, yeah, yeah. I've put two down, they're both wrong apparently, so. I'll give you a clue, it's in Europe. Right, right. well, well that, thank you for that. That's just taken one of my answers out. <laughs> so I'll just have to go with the other one. Leave that there. Right. Oh, hang on, just go wait for Sheldon come back in. Uh... <laughs> Right, we all done on that one? Yes. yes. Right, question 26. Which rock star once said, instead of getting married again... We will rock you. Instead of getting married again, I'm going to find a woman I don't like and just give her a house. This <laughs> on my ex. <laughs> I've heard that before as well, so I'm just going to check who it is. Uh... Oh, okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that makes sense. Is it Which it's not. It, it's not. Give us the he was. He was big 
in the 70s and 80s. Which rock star once said, instead of getting married again, I'm going to find a woman I don't like and just give her a house? Yeah, but he didn't get married. I'm sure he didn't. Yeah, exactly seven days. So. Sorry? Mm. No, I don't know. It is that one that's been married like five times. Uh, but you can't remember the name. No, I can't. Like he's famous because he's well, not just mega for that, famous. but because he's no, been married so mega, many times. Mega, mega famous. Oh, Bon Jovi. No, it's not Bon Jovi. Alfie. Rock band, you twat. This is the second time he's had that as an answer. Genghis Khan. Oh. <coughs> I don't know why, but I just had Cliff Richard come into my head. No, he's not. Cliff think Richard's he's... married. Oh, oh yeah. No, not Cliff Richard. Not Cliff Richard. I, that's the clue I'll give you. Not Cliff Richard. I got that. It's, it's not Cliff. No. It's, it's, it's not Cliff. It's no, it's no one from America. It's nobody from America. It's nobody from America, and it's not Cliff Richard. Yes. Yeah. That's fake. Yeah. Bloody hell. Like a husky voice. Well, Freddie Mercury was gay. No, and I, I'm not going to give you. Uh, no, no, I'm not oh, giving you any more clues. For giving out the clues, she's given out half a dozen already, and you're just adding to it. <laughs> wake up! I'm tired. Just wake up, and I'll open a packet of Maggie. <clears throat> a what? Freddie's they anyway, even know. They don't get the link. I do. <laughs> Link. It's gonna open a packet of Maggie. <laughs> what the fuck? It's all right. When you tell the answer, you will know then. Oh God! Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I've just got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you still can't think who the who the flip sings it. <laughs> I, no, I, I cannot give you any more clues. He's, he's just told you one of them. Give some of the words. I wouldn't have heard the hit or hug. Okay. That's not English. Would that, no. Where's he from? Who in the hand behind it? Oh, my beast bottom handbag. Oh, look. Oh, there goes me haggis. I, I, I just sing some of the words. Everyone's going to get it. Well, I might not. So can you sing them? Taylor, I just gave you a clue by telling Ellen to wake up, and I'll make her some Maggie. Oh! Sing wake up! <laughs> wake up! Wake up! I've got something to say to you. <laughs> Should we just tell him the answer? <laughs> Lindsay's there going. <laughs> Taylor, he's got a husky voice. I can see his face. He likes, face. He likes yeah. football. Yeah, 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 yeah. And rumour had it in the 70s he liked balls anyway and made a film about that. <laughs> Taylor won't know about that. Can't. Mark's got it. Mark's got it. What does Mark say? Right, 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 right. right. What, does Mark say there? what does that say? Fuck me. Oh my god, Taylor is giving you the answer. <laughs> this is this is comedy gold. Is this really is. No, it's not his last name. Oh, okay. Well then. I got it, guys. Right. What now what what's that say? Right? What's that? Oh, oh, God Almighty! <laughs> what was the Australian bloke? No, it's not Rod Hull. Don't roll your eyes at me and change your fucking eyes. The artist. I'm just got for some reason I've got the artist in me yet. The Australian guy um, with the beard. Oh Christ, what's his name? Will Farris. <laughs> He brought what? our songs about two little boys. Little did we know that was an insight into his personal life. <laughs> <What? clears throat> 
How many can, you guess what it is? can you guess what it is yet? <laughs> right. Are you ready for question 27? Alfred? No. <laughs> yeah. Right, question 27. For what main purpose did the Romans use bottled Portuguese urine? Good God. Mm -mm -mm. The Romans? Oh, seriously? Oh, right. What? Right. Portuguese piss in a bottle. What did Romans use it for? What did they use? What did they use bottled Portuguese people? I'm going to say that. I've already given you guys far than, more than enough clues. So is everybody else here with regards to Rod Stewart. So I'm not going to give any more clues out. Patty, just give it away. You just said the answer. Took, yeah, but you all knew. And it took like 15 minutes for anybody to go, oh, yeah. I'll try okay. this one again. What main purpose did the Romans use bottled Portuguese urine? Sorry? No. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Okay with that. <laughs> and I, I did this in history. This is it was that popular that it had to be taxed. Right, number twenty eight. All I can say is, looking at the answers, someone's got it right. Um, which is the only day of the week that has an anagram? <coughs> oh. I'm going to go with my first answer. All oh, right, okay. Which is the only day of the week where if you jumbled the letters around, you can make an anagram out of it? There's me. I'm now about to start jumbling them about. So if you if you moved all the letters around, you'd make another word. That's not that one. No, for fuck's sake, it's one of the other five. Yeah, I'm not going through it anymore. Huh? <laughs> What's the only day of the week that you can make an anagram out of the letters? In other words, you can make another word out of the letters of the, yeah. the day. So, yeah. But also I don't know if that's you know, the whole thing about doing a live quiz is when I read out the, uh, the the questions, I don't actually read the answers out until later when everybody's done. <laughs> you just read them out later. <laughs> I think what we should do is we'll do a reverse quiz and actually give the answers and you've got to tell us the questions. <laughs> do you know what? I might mix the answers up in a minute and just read them out and say, right, which question do you think I go with? I think it's this one. I think it's this one. We ready for uh, number 29? Yeah. True or false? Really true or false? The Spanish flu originated in Spain. No. I knew the answer. <laughs> I've Didn't just, look, look, it's, it's Wayne with a ball gag. What's going on? Didn't it go over there? Well, this is quiet. Say that again. Did the Spanish flu originate in Spain? You'd have to be stupid not to know this one. True. <laughs> yes, that's very true, Ellen. <coughs> <coughs> right. Now we're on we're on the home straight, we're on the last three now. So which is 33 questions. No, it's 33. Mm -hmm. yeah. Weird number, isn't it? Yeah, we're only oh, yeah. on last four. Today. Last four. In which country, this is question 30. I get a point for that. In which country do golfers buy hole in one insurance policies to cover the lavish gifts they have to buy if they get a hole in one? And I know this. I actually know this one. I'm going out on a whim. <clears throat> I'm going to say. Yeah. I did this because this seems like the only place that would. I can see your reasoning. I and I. The but reason. This was my first choice. The reasoning is correct, but you're. Wow. you're thank you. Mate. This is my first choice. You're. You're, you're completely. Uh, Got me somewhere like that. Isn't it? I only know it because of my dad. 
it's Mando. actually it's the only place that i know that actually does this and that i it's one of those obscure things that somebody tells you years ago and then you go oh bloody hell when it comes up in a quiz like this right number 31 which world city no i'll change the wording on this which country city <coughs> which country city has the slogan what happens here stays here what country's city has the slogan oh. what happens here stays here yeah, I don't know how to spell it. did i spell it right you're, you're, you're right but you're not right but you're right no, i know i'm right mm -hmm. i just don't answer it yeah you got it? Yeah. It's a I'm, going place I'm going to show you something. You, you know people can do impersonations of things, right? Yeah? Yeah? See my hands? Look at my fanny hand. <laughs> <laughs> Moving swiftly on. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you one last time. <laughs> Mark, forget get that camel out of your room. <laughs> camel Joe. <clears throat> Question 32. If you dug a hole through the centre of the earth, starting from New Zealand's capital city, which yep. European country would you end up in? If you went a straight line through the equator, you wouldn't through, through the center of the earth. Sorry, you burn up before you get if there. If you had a hole through the center of the earth and you lined up New Zealand and this under, other country, if you started in New Zealand, straight line through the center of the earth, which country would you end up in? But you can't go through the center of the earth <laughs> if you could. hypothetically. Right. That if now if he just said hypothetically, yeah, hypothetically, Mr. Grimsdale, hypothetically, if you started digging a hole in New Zealand in one of my relatives' backyard and you went a straight line right through the centre of the earth, apart from saying hello to a few dinosaurs as you went past and maybe the other people that live beneath, what country would you end up in when you popped out the other side? Uh, oh. This is Mark talking about my tiny hand. Take my strong hand. Bet us had some action, Mark. How do you think I ended up with a little hand like this? I was single for a few years, you know. No. No. Um, what have you got? What else did you write down, then? I can't tell you the answer. There's two possible answers. Oh. We got. There's two possible. Again? I've just no. I've just worked out. I've just. I've just worked out the geography, and it's a possible two countries. What's one of them? It's one of us. I read can it I out one time. Can I get? Can I get double points if I put both put both countries down? No. No, you can. You can only have the the one. The one. If yeah. you dug a hole through the centre of the earth, starting from New Zealand's capital city, right. which, okay. European, which European country would you end up in? Okay. Oh, yeah. Cool. No. Excuse me, my other answer wasn't in Europe. <laughs> yeah, I think he has, actually. Oh. Right. Now, and here's the last question. Now, I actually, this is a really cool one this because I know, I know the answer to this one oh, question 33 and the final question in the 2020 dark mirror christmas oh, quiz that's a good right once owned by henry the eighth what was bought by cecil chubb in a southwest england or right listen shush shush daddy talking now shush once owned by henry the eighth what was bought by cecil chubb in a southwest England auction on the 21st of September 1915 for £6,600. And the clue, I just gave you a clue when I was reading it out. Well, that question was so long, I've forgotten what you started with. Right. 
Once owned by Henry VIII, what was bought by Cecil Chubb in a Southwest England auction on the 21st of September 1915 for £6,600? His cousin. How old is Like some young. It's a place. He bought a place. He bought. It's a somewhere. place. He bought. He bought land. He bought a place at auction in South West England on the twenty first of September, nineteen fifteen, and he paid six thousand six hundred pounds for it. I'm not going to tell you the answer. The, the King's Head Pub. Oh, really, uh, one last time. Once owned by Henry VIII, what was bought by Cecil Chubb in a southwest England auction on the 21st of September 1915 for £6,600? No, Carl, it wasn't a box or a Dibbett box. That's the last question of the quiz. I already asked that. Bells are ringing out Christmas Day. I think it's pretty stupid. It's just been in the news quite a bit lately as well. Uh, I'm deeply distraught that they've actually changed the words to that song. Oh, don't, don't even get me started on it because a faggot could be something you eat or a bundle of sticks, but apart from anything else. Oh, they just said it, it also. It also means in the context of the song, wasn't it? Worthless, wasn't it? Or something um, like that. Worthless baggage. Cheap Something lousy like figure in the context of the song was you cheap lousy idiot. Same similar thing. It didn't mean yeah. what what people but thought it meant. Tesco's Tesco's down here. They've removed that entire verse. So even when she says you scumbag, you maggot, and yeah. a bit before they've taken that bit out. Ah, you stupid flipping phone. I, I just went. <laughs> do, 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 do. What are you doing? I don't know. What are you doing? No, because that's not in the southwest, I don't is it? Know where the, oh, I don't know what's in the southwest. Okay. Land. <laughs> Same lines. Right, yeah. shall I? Uh, Wait. Shall what's I... it called? The no, don't stoke. The trippy don't, place. Don't, it's the don't, trippy place. Don't. It's in the trippy place. Don't. It's the trippy place. Right, shall I uh, read the questions out? The answers out there from number one. Hold on. Mm. I've read that. Dad, if it is that place, it, it is, isn't it? <laughs> I just love the spelling, that's all. I'm just looking at it going, yeah. Right. I get that. If it is that, I get that. Now, question one. I asked, what part of his body did musician Gene Simmons insure for $1 million? Uh, $1 million? I said now, the Obi. Exactly right. He was the lead singer of Kiss. And he was known for his tongue. And he insured his tongue. Because he had a tongue that can come down here somewhere. Ladies, stop. I realise I realize the question makes a lot of people moist. But... Oh, Ellen. Oh! Look at that. I got my she got the eyeball in today. No, Ooh. see, no wonder he's actually a happy guy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> question two. For those of you who got that, it was his tongue. Question one. Question two. We know Mark. TCB. What facially and not a pearl necklace do Fred Flintstone and Betty Rubble have for that Wilma and Barney don't? Did I get this one? These. Oh. Oh. It's these. Could it be the their eyes? The eyes? Yeah, the whites oh. of the eyes, because the others have got dots. But those two have got yeah. the whites of the eyes and the dots. I said nose. So mark them off. I did. Oh, cramp. Right. Number three. So you've got the same which, answers as me anyway. Which game demonstrated on TV in 1966 the competitors accused of being sex and I actually got this one. Okay. Yeah, you did. Twister. Oh, I got that wrong. <laughs> I put Cluedo. I put, what did you put? It. Yeah, I did Cluedo. Yeah. <laughs> It's where these two dodgy, two dodgy people meet up in the, in the library with a lead pipe. In. What are they doing with that? I wonder. Oh, no, custard, hello. That, that's a certain other adult version. Um, 
Number four, wh who has the lowest IQ in order? A moron, an imbecile, or an idiot? I said imbecile. I've gone with imbecile. Idiot. According to early 20th century psych psychological definitions, a moron's IQ range is 51 to 70, an imbecile is 26 to 50, an idiot is 0 to 25. Wow. Well, what, do you, what do you call people that are lower than zero? Because I know a few of them. Uh, In-laws. Um. <laughs> I was watching a thing about this, though, and it was imbecile. Idiot. <laughs> Don't call her an idiot. No, it's idiot. <laughs> the answer is idiot. You idiot. <laughs> I was watching something about it the other day, and it was imbecile. I'm, I'm, it's idiot. Idiot is zero, an IQ is zero to twenty-five. Don't query it, because we'll get, we'll get, we'll get disqualified. Number question five: What sex symbol first appeared in the six-minute-long nineteen thirty film *Dirty Dishes*? Betty Boop. Yeah, you're spot on. Betty Boop. You're doing the do when you are through. No, I didn't. And yeah. there's nothing you can do just doing the do. Sorry. Um, question six. The UK's Dyslexia Research Trust is based in which British city? Oh, and this you're... is quite ironic. Right, I said Essex because I thought it would be really funny because right. Essex comes to I'll, re I'll read it because it, well, the, the clue is actually in the question. Um, the UK's Dyslexia Research Trust is based in which British city? It's going to be somewhere that no one can spell. Yeah. I put York because it's easy. To spell. Reading, reading, reading. Uh, yeah. Trick question. Essex would have been funnier because have you met Joey Essex or have you seen Joey Essex? I've seen Joey Essex and quite uh, frankly, excuse me, right, no, no, no. Don't start labelling Essex because us people in the north, we are not like them. Yeah, because they're in the Essex. We we have a north and south divide in Essex. We live people we, that can spell and people that can't. We live in the north. Yeah, the people the people that can spell live in the north of Essex. <laughs> um, right. Which word officially meaning dried dung hanging from the wool of a sheep's ass is commonly used? In colloquial Australian English, to refer to an eccentric person with poor social skills. I said dingleberries. No, not dingleberries. Oh, dingle, dingbat. Oh, it, could be it was dag. Uh, dag. Ah, dag. Shrew. Cool, Put another shrimp on the Barbie. <sighs> ah, here we go. You'll like this one. Number eight. What color is the is most used in toilet roll in France? What's the common, the most common colour? A loo roll in France. Yeah. Pink. Yeah. Pink. The it's of my yeah, pink. So the console. Oh, they pink, oh, they pink. She made my. Uh -huh. Right. <coughs> Question nine. Nine. Uh, nine and nine. If you're, uh, if you're discombobulated, you are, what are you? I said I am confused. Yeah, confused. Yes, confused. When you go <laughs> poof around somebody's ears like that, and it shoves air down there, and it, a it, it tear the eardrums, but it makes you dizzy because it, it buggers up your balance. Oh. Do I like dags? No, no, Mark. I'm not particularly fond of sheep's asses, oh especially and crossing yeah. with poop. Yeah. <laughs> it's a wrecking ball. Do you see that? It's actually dangling off my fucking crossing ankle. Right. Where were we? Just confused. Right. Here we are. This is one that I think got everybody here. Which four-letter sure? word ending in K means to have intercourse? Talk. Talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dirty. Said, Dirty. Said, yeah, everybody in here said either fuck or wank. No, it was talk. Wonk. Social intercourse. Social said, intercourse. I said this to Ellen. You know when I said social distancing? You said sexual no, you said I said, yeah, to talk is to have intercourse. Social intercourse. Right, well, it oh, means that, that, that you read the question wrong. I didn't read the question wrong at all. Yeah, you no. A word out. No, I didn't leave a word out. Which four-letter word ending in K means to have intercourse? Yeah. I knew the answer. I knew right. the answer when he finished reading the question. question. So. Verbal. Verbal. You, no, you're just a sore loser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me, madam. No. One word that's from you would be disqualified. <laughs> 
Right. Question 11. Oh, Which that can't put bonk. <laughs> she said wank when I said socially distancing. Um, which humorous engineering unit is defined as a third of a horsepower or 250 watts? Donkey power. Oh, we went yeah. with a pony. She got it right. You were almost said it was donkey. A donkey is a third of a horsepower. I did say duck power, but then I had to change it to donkey. A third of a horse. Carl, Carl Hutchinson said donkey as well. <laughs> Black. Black. Thank you. Black. Um, right, number 12, complete this Billy Con Connolly quote. My definition of an intellectual is someone who can listen to the William Tell overture without thinking of what? The Lone Ranger. Give that man a peanut. <laughs> you just woke Freddy up. <laughs> I just right? need to woke Freddy up. <laughs> Uh, still asleep, though. Oh bloody hell! <laughs> yeah, she couldn't sneeze normally. I love the way when he cries, he goes. Oh, <laughs> um, well, he does that. Sounds like he's possessed. <laughs> number thirteen, an orchid, an orchidometer, is a medical instrument used to measure what part of the male body? Yeah, this, this this question was a load of bollocks. Exactly right. Yeah, a load right. of bollocks. Yeah, it's balls. It's normally used, yeah, and it's used by veterinarians as well when they do, do um, when they castrate uh, rams. Something to do with measuring the circumference of the testicle. Yeah. Just cup them in your hand. It's easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell you okay. what, guys, go home. Cup cup your two year old's balls. Go on. <laughs> Tell us how big they are. Exactly. Fucked up. <laughs> Go up to your cousin's house. Hello. <laughs> God, Johnny, you've grown. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to the Dark Mirror Christmas show. Um, number 15. What was Buzz Aldrin's mother's rather appropriate maiden name? Marion Moon. You, moon. It was Moon. Well, I put that right. <laughs> I put that right. Oh, I don't need to have a high five. There you go. Moon. Yeah, but like you said, the answer the, the answer really was slightly yeah. obvious because yeah. of who Buzz Aldrin was. You just had to remember who Buzz Aldrin was. I just yeah. said walk, foot, or step. Because Whoa, somebody just walked over my grave. You ain't got one. Oh, my... uh, right, oh, question 15. What quality in a man is a sapiosexual lady most attracted to? Ellen's sapiosexual. I put two things down. I put penis. We know what you're... Penis? <laughs> <laughs> Ellen, let's have a bit of uh, uh, normality out of you. What did you put down? The size of his gonads. What? <laughs> I, put, I put dad body and intelligent men. It's You've got both of them wrong, haven't you? I said big brain. <laughs> It's intelligence. <laughs> you get half a point for that. You've you got intelligence. Oh, oh good. I get I get two points then. No, you get one. Actually, I, well, no, I should have your point because I put clever men intelligence. So it means the same thing. I know. So one point. Yeah. <laughs> so, so to me, with with a woman, it's easy. If you can breathe through your nose, then you, you're sorted. Um, right. <laughs> Number 16, named in 2017 by scientist Vazrik Nazari because of its yellowish white head scales reminded him of Donald Trump's hair. What species oh. of insect is Neopalpa Donald Trumpy? I went to put butterfly, but it's not, it's moth. Because you've got to let everybody else talk first. Okay. What do you say? Moth. I went to put butterfly, but I put. Uh, Put moth down. That's what well, I you're all right. I put beetle. It is a moth species that occurs in Southern Carolina and Northern Mexico. I came, I came across that species when I was doing some research on the moth man. It? My God, you must really like moths. No, it, it, it came up when I was doing some research for the moth man. It came up when you were doing research for the moth man. Yeah, it flew and landed on me hand. <laughs> 
Right. Thank you. Have you ever watched um, Kung Pao Enter the Fist? No. It's a martial arts flick, but yeah. it's a comedy. And what they've done is they've taken clips of old 1970s martial arts films and mixed them in. And there's a bit where you've got an old Chinese Kung Fu master, and it's from the 1970s film. And he's, he's talking, and he goes, <gasps> and starts coughing. And they um, edited in a moth flying around. He goes, <gasps> and it goes, jumps down his throat. And goes, <coughs> like that. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Seven, number 17. Would you weigh lighter the same or more at the equator than you would at the poles? Lighter. I've said less, lighter. Yeah, it's, it's lighter. Um, centrifugal force to the spinning of the earth is at its maximum at the equator. Or you're not wearing a jacket. Or you're not wearing a jacket, no. 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 <laughs> Did I get this one? Did I get this one? Yes. Um, oh, it's number the 18. <laughs> Yeah, you got it as well. Number 18, yeah. which phrase meaning energetic labour dates back to the 17th century? Elbow, Elbow grease. grease. There you go. Spot on. And what you want to read out your points in at, uh, at the end of this. Number 19, what sort of tax, and you were all doing it, what sort of tax was first introduced by Henry VIII in 1535? You could have done that. You were all sitting there going like that. <laughs> He was there going, and he's got a beard. I was out there with that one. No, you weren't. You were sat over there. You could have done that as a two-parter. Part B could have been, when was it abolished? Recently. I think it was quite fairly recent as well. When was it? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, good. Okay, Here Google. This is, this is the music. Oh, well, when gonna was it. the beard tax abolished? Seventeen seventy-two. Really? So nearly yeah. over two hundred years later. So it was quite quite recently. <laughs> yeah, well, it was quite recent, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Can imagine, yeah. Imagine if they brought that out now with the hip, <laughs> the hipsters. You know, all these idiots who walk about with their chinos with about three turnips and halfway up their ankles. And the silly little beards, and they look down at you because they, they eat vegan cheese. Can you imagine that if they brought out the beard tax now? They'd be knackered. <laughs> Women <laughs> tax for going to a stoning. You can watch <laughs> again. Who threw that? Oh, I didn't. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. Where were we? Here we are. Number number no, we're on number twenty. What act links Norman soldiers at the Battle of Creasy in 1346, footballer Jerry Barton at Goodson Park in 2006, and Ukrainian Vitaly Sidorik at the 2017 Eurovision Song Contest? I'll let you. Dropped his pants. They all mooned. Can you imagine that? All those soldiers at the Battle of Creasy just turning around and going, "Hey, that's that, you bastards!" Yeah. Well, the FA, the FA took ages to actually decide whether they were going to actually charge uh, Joey Barton with uh, misconduct for dropping his shorts on pitch. Before done? you go on to the next question, I have to use the bathroom. Well, bye. Next question. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just talk amongst ourselves for a minute. Um, yeah, I thought, I thought that the best clue I could give with that was, um, what's his face, um, Jeff Jeff's Cocker. He didn't drop his trousers, yeah. but he did bend over and flick his tailcoat out, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. And Michael Jackson got quite excited by it. Michael Jackson, the best rendition I've ever seen of Earth Song was an old friend of mine, huge gay guy, and we called him Gay Dave. With and he, he stood there with two leaks in our back garden when it was a really blowy day, and he stood there like that, his shirt <laughs> going in the wind, two leaks going, ah! <laughs> it was brilliant. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Has she finished? No, she's probably only just started. <laughs> she's got to make it all the way to the West Wing, you know. <laughs> Come on, you, hurry up. Carl, Carl Hutchinson's got 16 out of 20 so far. I don't know how many I've got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 
Oh, I've got 15. Close behind. Hmm. Only one point in it. What have you got so far? Nine. Nine. What have you got? Eleven. Eleven. So far, you're being beaten by your missus. What have you got? Fifteen. So far, out of twenty. Yeah. Ah, you're right. You finished Play making back. a. G have you finished making a GMT? I don't drink. Uh, well, you might be blind, didn't you? Anyway. Oh, come on. We don't need sound effects as well. Jesus Christ, woman. We're not at that question, are we? <laughs> you got to sanitize your hands, COVID and all that. What oh, you yes. did yeah. TV, your home is entirely up to you. You smelly shit. We, we two houses mixing. <laughs> Why are you farting? Good God. Oh, blimey. Is that really him? Did you, just, did you just drop your gut? No, I think it was Phantom. It was you, you dirty gear. He's, he's, oh, no, that's Tippy. He's sitting right behind us with the guilty look. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. Question 21. Question Too many 21. Many eyes. I thought this was a good one. Question 21. Tom's father has five sons. The first four are named 10... 20, 30, and 40. What is the name of the fifth son? Tom. Tom. Bye, yeah, you got it. Is it his father? Yeah. I Nevada. I Nevada. Like Darth that Vader. Is... He's actually named after Vada. That's like that is what I just said. The horse is called Wednesday. That's right. Old. Uh, what fun nickname was given to Rembrandt's The Night Watch after being overly restored in the 1940s? I put De Nachtwacht. The day yeah. The Day right? Watch. I was right. And they, they, right. I've, I've it was overly seen, restored. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen the painting right. and on the, the, the sky and everything like that, where they, they'd restored it, they cleaned it up far too much and it was it was almost like daylight. So it was it was nicknamed The Day Watch. Yeah. I got that wrong next up. I put the Nachtwacht. No. I got this one as well. Name twen uh, number 23. In Kent, there's a signpost which points to two places, which really appear to be pointing to a quick lunch. Name the two places. McDonald's. <laughs> no, not McDonald's. KFC. I gave a clue out when I said there's a lookout place. Carl's got it. I gave a, a, a clue out when I said there's a lookout place in Somerset called this. The first thing I thought of was sandwich. And then I thought, but there ain't a place called sand and there ain't a place called which. In Somerset, there's a place called Ham Hill, which is a lookout point. And that's, and it's, yeah, ham and sandwich. That was the answer. Well done, Carl. I, did, I didn't think there was a place in Kent called I Dan put, well, I put cheddar and ham. You can have half a point for that. You can have half a point. Cheddar's in Somerset. Yeah. Cheddar's in Somerset, not in Kent. <laughs> Cheddar Gorge. <laughs> well, I mean, hey. to be honest, I did... Oh, let me I did. You. I did draw a sandwich. Does that count? <laughs> Has it got ham on it, or is that cheese? No, it's jam. I'll give you both half a point, because you both were sort but it, of there. It, I mean, jam sounds like ham. <laughs> You're bad. You're bad. Number 24. What is the most common natural object to be mistaken for a UFO? Brilliant! I said, you think so, a meteor? I put the aircraft. Of the goddess Venus. of love. Venus. Venus. Yeah. Venus. Venus. Oh, yeah. right. Okay, can't see Venus all year round, can you? Yeah. Uh, I just suppose, suppose it's wherever it is in the where you know because of the world spinning yeah. and stuff. I think you can see it all year round. It just depends which country you're in. That's why we've got the um, Christmas star on the twenty first, isn't it? Uh, is it yeah. Venus or Venus and Mars? Venus and Saturn. Um, like and we all know which this one was. Uh, 
no, no. Gibson Saturn. Gibson Saturn makes the, the the other one, the four plug one that's in the by the Christmas tree. Number twenty six. No, number twenty six. No, yep. In which country are there six villages called Silly, twelve called Billy, and two called Pratt? France. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's France. Because they are Silly Billies. Yes. And Pratt. I know up in, is it the Orkneys, you've got Twat? You've got the village of Twat in the Orkneys. Well, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you here. We have a town about three miles away from here called Fingering Ho. Right. Obie, enough. Sounds like some people's hobbies. Um, yeah. Fingering Ho. What's that lane down here we called? Got Batty Lane. Batty right? Lane. Yeah, we got Batty Lane. The batty. He's what is a batty? Uh, I don't know. Batty boy. Oh, what? Oh, yeah, France, number 25. Batty lane. Oh, that's where they practice? Yeah. Oh, practice. it's where archers used to practice in medieval London. So, batty <laughs> lane doesn't mean batty man lane. <laughs> Got batty boy. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Cat Hole Lane in Somerset, isn't there? Near where we used to live. There's Cat Hole Lane. I got Rod Stewart. You, you did get Rod Stewart. You're very clever. Right. Really? Number 26. Which rock star what said, instead of getting married, I'm going to find a woman I don't like and just give her a house. Who said that? Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart. There you go. Wake up, Maggie. I think I got some and see you. Number 29. True or... No, hang on. 28. Which... Which is the only day of the week that has an anagram? No, 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 yeah. no. Oh, bugger me! Sorry, I, I had it up too high. Well, for what main purpose did the Romans use bottled Portuguese urine? And this is mouthwash. True. Is that true? What did you say? Blood? Yeah, mouthwash. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I only got that because Mark put it in the chat. Portuguese jam. urine was considered to be the strongest yep. and most purest. And Emperor Nero taxed it. Ew. He put that he put a tax on it because it became so popular because of the ammonia in it. Did such a good job that Nero had to put a tax on it. Well, so you know. that's Iwis, but in medieval is, grills it medieval, in his no, element. is it medieval England? But we used to uh, tan our um, leather. Yeah, tanners. Yeah, they used piss and shit, didn't they? Do you know that's we'll where the same place Paul comes from? Yeah. We'll also go as far as to say that um, our soldiers during World War Two used to have to drink it in the desert. Yeah. Yeah, some of them did, did didn't they? But it's been proved that it actually does water. Water bad. was more important. Water was more important for the engines. So, so in certain occasions when water was in very short supply, they would drink their own urine. Yeah. Um, nice. No. Number 28, what day of the week, and it's only one day you can do this with, is actually an anagram, or you Monday. can make an anagram. Monday. 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 Yeah. Monday. It makes what? dynamo. There you go. I, th I always, always think so. Always. That the magician? <laughs> yeah. I walk on water because I'm dynamo. Um, <laughs> number 29, true or false, the Spanish flu originated in Spain? True. False. 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 It's false. False. Nobody actually knows where it was originated. Uh, wartime censors suppressed the news of the flu to avoid affecting morale. But since Spain was neutral during World War One, the Spanish media was free to report it in one gory detail. Hence, the sickness first made headlines in Spain. So they called it Spanish flu. And this one, this is, I, I like this one. N number 30. In which country do golfers buy hole-in-one insurance policies to cover the lavish if they have to buy if they get a hole-in-one? Ellen. Hang on, I've got a pop off. Come back on. We'll wait. Ellen's dad apparently has told her this. It's because uh, he's a golfer. Yeah, I, I, I found this one out a, a few years ago and it's actually really interesting. Let me back. Right. Let me unwanted phone calls again. Did you brush your teeth? Carl, again, you're right, mate. The country that um, does insurance for hole in one. Japan. Japan. Oh. I put Dubai. 
I put Do you know, Dubai. funny enough, Taylor to start with, she put J- Dubai, then she did something else, and then she put Japan. No, I just put Dubai in Australia. Oh, we were wrong. I, I, I just want to ask, Carl, are you actually using Google here because we can't see you? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean it, mate, honestly. We've got three questions left. Uh, what's the slogan? What happens here stays there. Come from uh, Vegas. I'm saying USA, Las Vegas. Yeah, you're all right. Yeah, Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. Question so you two at the craps table, then you're in the shit, boy, and it stays here. Well, sorry. He dug a hole through the centre of the earth, starting from New Zealand's capital city. Which European country would you end up in? <coughs> ben. Where? Spain. Poland. Don't you dare say Morocco. Spain. Because <laughs> I was looking at it geographically with, with New Zealand, it fits into Spain, but you said Wellington. So that's Spain. And then there's another part of New Zealand that actually comes into Morocco. The last one, and this is the one she's getting over excited about because she's actually got it right. Once owned, this is question 33, the last one, and this will do <laughs> the champion of the Dark Mirror Radio Show Christmas quiz. Question 33. Once owned by Henry VIII, what was bought by Cecil Chubb in a South West England auction on the 21st of September 1915 for £6,600? And Mr. Carl Hutchinson, I want to see your answer. Yeah. I got it with a scary I know it. I know it. I also did just tell you the name of it, but Scary Trippy Place. Scary Trippy Place. Scary Trippy Place. No, no, Carl's got it wrong. Look, 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 look. Definitely uh, are, wrong. They, are they digging a tunnel underneath it by any chance? They may very well be digging a tunnel under it. Was... Is there a wizard? Is there a Would you like wizard? to say the answer? <laughs> it was. Glastonbury. No. Fuck. No. No. Stonehenge. Stonehenge. No. No, you put I scary, trippy place. place. Yeah. Stonehenge. Glastonbury's a scary, trippy place. It was a wizard. I got excited for that. <laughs> Stonehenge. Oh, okay. Add your answers up. I got 25. I got 25. Okay. Yeah. What do you get? 25 right. as well? I'm going to have to say goodbye because my dad's trying to ring me and he keeps messaging me. Um, yeah. Well, tell him Bye. everybody who's watching Dark Mirror so when happy Christmas, Ellen's dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will say goodbye. Um, Bye. We'll catch up with you before Christmas you. anyway, all right? Yeah. All right, later. then. Bye. Oh, 15. What do you get? Well, Ellen and Wayne have won this one. They both got 25. And then came Taylor with 21. And then came Sheldon with 15. So, big round of applause. Round of applause. Because we got dogs. Round of applause. No? Okay. And, and the people listening, we have a winner there. By one. So, listeners, Carl's won. Presenters... Mr. Mr. Wayne and Mrs. Wayne have won. I am excited yeah. to bring the questions up. I've I've counted it was 25 and a half, but I've counted it as 25. Well, if we go up, Helen's not here now. Helen's not here now, so we'll keep. Well, it no, I, I took out the one because I drew a sandwich. I took out that half point because I drew a sandwich. <laughs> it was a jam sandwich. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, no, it was a half point. It was sandwich. It was sandwich. It was sandwich. You still no, yeah, got a half got point. Two and a half point. Well, it was 25 and a half then. There you go. You, you, you can say that when you go to bed tonight. You go, ha! Oh, yeah. I'm I got half a point. You're in. I'm going to remember it every time I go into the fridge now and see the ham. I'm going to go, oh, yeah, sandwich and ham. Yeah. It's down in Kent, that is. <laughs> You're that excited? <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, the end of the uh, 2020 Christmas quiz. Um, and no, Mr. No. Wayne and Mrs. Wayne have won. Done it again. And for the listeners, Mr. Carl Hutchinson has won. So, um, 
all I'll say is, is everybody have a very, very happy Christmas. Um, we are back again January, January the... Ooh. January. We're back again in January, and I can't remember which date. It's two weeks from now. Is it this, not the fourth. Let me have a quick look. Just look at the date. It is... Doo -doo 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 seventh, eighth. It's January the 8th. We are back on January the 8th. And we will be back with our A to Z of countries and myths and mythological and all things spooky in countries from A to Z. And I think we are on... Was it... D. D. We're on D. Yeah, we finished off. We finished off D last week because we did Cambodia last week, didn't we? In That's Columbia. Yeah. So we're, we're, so we're, we're, we're D on D now. D. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm going to give Wayne the D on the eighth uh, of January. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, on that note, I will say have a very happy Christmas, everybody. Have a brilliant New Year, and let's hope that yes. Hell of a lot better for everybody. And yeah, uh, Merry, Merry and Christmas to everyone. Well, well done, Carl. Next time we come online, there'll be a baby. She's just gone to Luke, but there should be a baby here as well. And uh, Wayne, do your oh. last plug of the year and your happy Christmases. <laughs> my, last, my last what of the year? Plugs. Oh, hang on. I don't think I've got... Oh, yeah. There's me plug. No. Sorry. Yeah, anybody uh, that's interested, um, I'm trying to keep the tradition of telling ghost stories alive on Christmas Eve. Um, so at uh, about 10 o'clock Christmas Eve, I will be reading my latest uh, Spook and Ori called Cricket. I'll be reading that live over on Wayne Seaton Presents Spook and Ori group on Facebook. Um, they will also be av they're also available, all the previous ones are available on Amazon and through myself as well. So... Um, yeah, <laughs> obviously, if they're brought through me, I, I do sign them as well and I personalize them. You know, so. signed as well. It, um, but so far, this one's going to be a quite a good one. I'm at 17 and a half thousand words at the moment, so it's uh, if anybody ever wants anything signed by everybody at the uh, Dark Mirror show, uh, send us a self addressed envelope with a crayon and we'll do it for you, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good. I'm going to uh, end it now because we have gone way over. So ha happy, oh, very God. happy Christmas and a great New Year, and we will see you guys on the 8th of January at 9 p.m. Have a good Christmas, guys.